So, once you've seen behind the curtain, how do you get back to love? There's a place in life and the timeline where you view something from a distance, person, a job opportunity, a thing, something that you're doing or want to do or hoping to accomplish, and you look at it, and when you look at it, you look at it with hopes and dreams. And you sort of ignore everything about it that might be a warning sign or a little sketchy or, or just, you know, flawed and human. And then, uh, someday, lo and behold, it happens. You get the girl, you get the guy, you get the job, you accomplish that thing you said you were going to accomplish. But over time, and at first it's always awesome, yes, it's everything. A dream job. And then, you know, it turns out people and things and life and nothing is all good or all bad. Everything is both. And everybody has their moments of both. And some things are more bad than good. And some things are more good than bad. And some things are really great when they're great, but also really bad when they're bad. And then healthy boundaries comes into play. But you've pulled back the curtain, and it's always a really hard moment in the journey. When you step into something you were, had all these hopes and dreams for, and then one day, the dog runs over and pulls the curtain back, and it's some balding dude pulling levers <laughs> and blowing horns, and it's not a real wizard. <laughs> or it's a real human, and they've got, you know flaws and they don't put the toilet seat down and they don't flush or they're a little bit passive aggressive or they've got family baggage or like things happen you know and then we have a choice at that moment and I'm going to assume from here on out on this conversation that the flaws you uncovered are reasonable normal human flaws and not abusive or manipulative or violent or anything like that. When you're in those kinds of situations, take stock, listen to your friends, get the hell out, create healthy boundaries, walk away. Don't try to find a way to make it work. Okay? Disclaimer over. From here on out, I'm talking about everybody we know is screwed up at some level and you're never gonna live life if you want everything to be perfect and all your people to be perfect and every job to be only the perfect thing you were hoping for, fair? So, you've reached the point where you've gotten disillusioned for whatever reason, and I'm gonna argue that the reasons you got disillusioned were fair, and you're not wrong. But, that's not all there is to people, and that's not all there is to situations. How do you get back? I have a couple of theories, and we're gonna talk about them. But I'm gonna talk about first, Talisker, because Talisker is one of my favorites. And I've not had this one. Ooh, wow! Talisker, okay. That's a drama nose. So this is a um, part of a special release. This is 11-year-old Talisker, natural cask strength, special release for 2023. It's a part of a series that Diageo is doing. Um, and this one, the Talisker one, is celebrating and honoring the art on Portuguese, Portuguese ships um, that were a specific style of of boats and they carried port barrels around the world. And so this is a Talisker finished in ruby, white, and tawny port barrels. So I'm curious as to whether when I first was opening it, the port takes over and it becomes like a really candied, salty scotch, or whether the innate smoky character of Talisker that I love holds court. And I'll tell you on the first nose, the Talisker is strong with this one. <laughs> Wow, that is vibrant. That is the meatiest, weightiest Talisker that I've ever smelled. Way more than the classic 10. Way more intense. This has got to be a higher proof. It is. Holy crap. No wonder. 59.7% alcohol. No wonder it's more weighty. It's an incredible nose. It's... Mostly brine and salt and smoke and 
there's a really, as you get past all of that initial like, wow, there's this really rich sort of like velvety cloak of sweet fruits, dark fruits threaded through. Like honey glazed apricot, plum. There's almost an orange note again. Yeah, it's just really rich. I could live in that forever and try to analyze it. If I had the list in front of me, it'd be helpful, but I forgot to bring it. Wow. Man. That's punchy. It's good, but it's definitely a high proof whiskey. <clears throat> it's still clinging. The smoke is what lingers. There's that rich, dark sweetness like a dark chocolate with fruit. Mmm. But it is a very smoke-forward, briny islands whiskey. I'm adding a real dash of water to that. Immediately the nose softens. It's less smoky. It's more soft, sweet, and carameled. Vanilla. And then back to the brine and the dark fruit. Oh, there you go. Okay. Wow, that really balanced out and settled in with a little water and just became more of a classic, the, all the Talisker markers, but a little bit sweeter. They really, I know they port cask for these, but this is the least candied, sweet, port cask finished whiskey I've ever tried. It's just, it held its own character real strong. I'm wondering if that's the 11 year old. And I am, I love that about it. I want it to keep its character because I love Talisker. That's great, that's cool. That's a good Talisker. All right, so there's a Welsh term um, that's called hirith, hirith and I'm probably getting it wrong. That's my closest I can do of Welsh, which is this idea of homesickness tinged with sadness and longing. And if you are a human being like me, you know that that runs through your bones like thread, like blood. It has been throughout time expanded to refer to a longing or a homesickness for uh, an era past of whales of the past. Um, and it's also even been spread into an idea of a longing and a homesickness for a thing that never was. For something you, you feel is out there, but everything falls short of it. Mm, now that one lands. And I think that's something to remember, that there's a piece of all humans that is built with a longing for something you've never seen and never known and never encountered. And we keep looking for it and we look for it in people and we look for it in jobs and we look for it in accomplishments and we look for it in whiskey <laughs> or we look for it in vices. And you think this is it, this is the one, this is going to fill the thing, this is going to finally be like, yes, that's it, the longing is real, it's for this thing. And then you get there and it proves to not be the thing and you still carry with you the sense of longing, even in this moment. And it's sometimes hard to withdraw that projection from the thing and realize that sense of longing is a part of being human on this earth. And it's not meant to be fulfilled by any of those things. And so, you recover, I think, God, this is so psych, pop psychology. It's not, it's actual psychology, but I'm not a psychologist. I think by remembering that all of those hopes and dreams and expectations are a part projection from you. And that when you withdraw the expectations and projection from that thing and allow people to be themselves and flawed in a mixed bag, you give a little more grace, and one of the easiest ways to have a little more grace for other people is to realize that you need the same grace. That you are also the person who is not fulfilling other people's expectations and dreams and not meeting every single need, and that you 
God, please need that grace and forgiveness from them. And that the job and company you've created is also a little broken and a little messed up and you don't communicate all the way and you don't execute plans in all perfect ways and you need a little grace and forgiveness from your staff and your coworkers. And, and if you can extend that which you need to others, I think we all end up better for it. And that's the end of my TED Talk. <laughs> we can help people remember. That's the point. It can be us who helps people remember. I'm really glad you're here.